Hey everybody, this is our practice on doing a recorded unit. What I plan on doing, hopefully if this works, is recording what you're to do in a unit. That way you can play it when it's best for you to watch it and you can pause and stop it and rewind if you need to and go at your own pace. Then a couple of times along the week, I'll set up small group meetings where we can get online and talk with each other and you can let me know how things are going, ask questions at that time. Also, if you're working on it and it's during the day, during the week, your parents can send me a remind message and ask me questions as well and I'll try to help at that time. So right now, this is just a practice week to see if this is going to work. So I'm going to begin by sharing the screen with you. This is titled our trial run unit. It's brand new, so we're trying it out. And it's, run means we're just trying it. We're going to see how a recorded online unit can go. We will try to include the following in this unit. As always, like we do it when we're at school, I ready reading. Do 30 or more minutes a day. Do I ready math 30 or more minutes a day. And try to go on extra math and do one round a day. I've sent your parents information for how you can log in. Hopefully it'll work. Maybe they'll have a whole lot better luck than I've had. You know how I've had difficulty with it at school. So let's keep our fingers crossed that it's going to work. Also, your daily reading, try to read 20 or more minutes a day. That can be books, that can be my own, that can be any activity. You can go on to um, the public library's website and get books from there. There's all kinds of different places to read, but mainly just you are doing the reading, not necessarily someone's reading it to you. And then I have complete my math lesson and send answers. I'm going to do that a little bit later. I think I figured out a way that we could still do our my math lessons. Then I want you sometime this week to go on an outdoor scavenger hunt. I have a list of things I want you to try to find. And then this is a new daily activity to write a journal entry each day. And I'll go over that as well. Then you need to do Miss Church's nutrition lesson. Now I've got here that it's on my teacher page on Clever, but that didn't work. So I have a link on this thing right here that I'm presenting this on one of the slides. Hopefully your parents can click on it and it connects to it. If it doesn't, they can do a copy and paste and hopefully it'll open up for them. These are our regular daily activities, things we've already been doing every day since the beginning of school. You're already reading and you're already math, but now it's 30 minutes since we're at home. Extra math, since we can't do mad math minutes, we're going to do our, keep our skills up with that with doing extra math every day, hopefully. And then your daily reading, 20 minutes or more a day. So here's the new daily activity. I want you to keep a daily journal. Write the date on the top like we do write the daily date in class. I have an example on the next slide to show you how I want you to do that. It can be typed and saved on your computer or written on paper for now. We'll work on trying to get like a, a journal going a little bit later. We might be able to get your journals to you. Um, we're just hoping that Something like that will happen to where you could get some of your materials from school and it'll be a lot better. But right now, just type it and save it on your computer or on a piece of paper would be fine. Right now, I just want to hear what you are doing each day. How are you feeling about what is going on right now? And write these in complete sentences, okay? What, are you, what do you know about what is going on right now? And write all you can about each day, all the things that you've done. So this is something more of do, doing it at the end of the day each day. So you can tell about your whole day. Now this will be something that can be very important to you in the future. It isn't something just for your teacher, but something for you to keep. This is a major time in history. And in the past, when there's been people that's taken journals and told about their day-by-day -day activities when something like this was going on, 
when they got older, they took it and wrote it into a book. And it was amazing books, very important books. The Diary of Anne Frank is one of them. She just wrote in her, her diary, which is the same thing as a journal, telling about things that happened during the day, just daily life. But it told a part of history. And you are living a part of a history right now. Here's an example journal entry. Here's like how we do our dates in class. Monday, March 23rd, 2020. Today is the second week of not going to school. It is hard to not see all my friends and teachers at school. I am now having to do my lessons online and this is all new to me. I hope everyone is staying safe. I'm going to do my best to do what is right to help as many people as I can stay safe and healthy. So what I would like for you to do is to try your best to do nice complete sentences beginning and ending the way they need to, and then have someone go back and read over it after you and help you make changes if it's needed. This is part of like editing, do self-editing, have someone else edit to make it the best that you can. Then we have our outdoor scavenger hunt. I want you to go outside and take a walk or hike and try to find as many items as you can on the list. Then have your parents send me a remind message. Tell how many items you found. What was the neatest item you found? And what was the hardest item to find? And then any interesting item you found that was not on the list. You might find something that's not even listed there. Now this can be done any day this week and be done more than one day as well because I was able to find two, not just one, but two. And the lists are on the next slide, okay? Now, when you go, you could walk around in your yard, try to find things around your house, or you could go maybe for a hike in the woods. But if you do that, please go with someone, with an adult. It's not safe to go there by yourself. I myself went today, went up to the top of my hill, walked around and came back, but I didn't go by myself. I went with my dog and my husband. It was really nice to have it going with someone else. And they can help you with your scavenger hunt, hunt as well. So here are the scavenger hunts. Scavenger hunt number one and number two. Now here is the link to the nutrition lesson from Miss Church. So with where I'm showing this right now, I'm able to do the mouse and I could click on it and open it up, see how it changes to the hand pointing. So when you get that, that means you can click on it. I'm not sure when you play yours if it will work that way or not. If it doesn't, your parents could go and highlight it, whoops, and then copy and paste it and hopefully they could go to it. Okay. Now here we're going to do our math, math lesson. This is the main thing I wanted to try. It's very important when I do any kind of lesson that you follow me as I explain what you need to do for this lesson. Follow the steps so that you'll be doing the subtraction process correctly and that later when we have more difficult problems to solve, you'll know how to do it correctly. You will copy the math problems listed if we're not able to print it and then have your parents take a picture to attach to a remind message to me. And this is how I will know you understand, okay? <clears throat> I've got it right here and it links to it for me. And it's gonna be page 423 and 424. And I put that I was gonna put it as a link on my Clever page, but that didn't work either. So you'll either be able to click here and it open. If it doesn't, just copy the problems Number the problems and show your work for both pages. I want to show you what it looks like. Okay. This is your homework. 10 on that page and at 14 total. And remember on your word problems, what you need to do on word problems about showing your work and this one, please show your work. Okay, now on this, this is the lesson. 
This is what we usually do in class. So I'm going to play this and I'm going to point to it as the man is talking and then we'll look at these down here together. See and show. You can use basic subtraction facts to help subtract hundreds. Find 500 minus 300. Helpful hint. You know 5 minus 3 equals 2, so 500 minus 300 equals 200. 500s minus 300s equals 200s. 500 minus 300 equals 200. For numbers 1 through 6, subtract. Talk math. What subtraction fact can you use to find 900 minus 800? Okay, so what we're doing is we're taking where it's written with the number and the hundreds and the two zeros for the tens and the ones and just writing it with the hundreds number and the word hundreds because we have zero on those two. And then we'll just look at five minus three. It equals two, and it's still hundreds. So then we go and write it as a number. So let's look at 800 minus 100. So I'm gonna go over here and I wanna put 800 on here. And then I'm gonna X out. 100. And then I'm going to count how many I have. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. There's seven of them, but the value of it is 700. So again, I'm going to be doing this and I'm not going to have the best handwriting in the world because I don't have my board and I'm using my mouse. Okay. So right here, we have 200 minus 200. Just look in the hundreds place, two minus two. And then we have all our zeros, and two minus two is zero. Here we have 700 minus 100. This is where I want you to be very careful. I want you to look at it and get in the practice of starting in the ones place, even when we know what their answer is gonna be. Because later on, if you don't practice starting with the ones, tens, and hundreds, it's going to confuse you when we have to regroup and decompose tens and hundreds. So zero minus zero is zero. Zero minus zero is zero again. And then we're just looking at seven minus one, which is six. So 700 minus 100 is 600. Zero and zero. Zero and zero again. And four minus two is two. So 400 minus 200 is 200. Zero minus zero, zero minus zero, zero. And then five minus one, four. So 500 minus 100 is 400. Same thing here. Got zero and zero. And then seven minus three is 400, or four. And 700 minus 300 is 400. Now let's get talk math. What subtraction fact can you use to find 900 minus 800? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna act like we do not have those zeros there and just put what number we have in our hundreds place in both of them, which would be, this is the math fact, nine minus eight. Nine minus eight equals one. So 900 minus 800 equals that one with putting the two zeros back, 100. So this is the math fact, the subtraction fact that helps you find 900 minus 800, okay? Usually we do my on my own in the problem solving, but it's more, and if you have to copy them and write them yourself, so I didn't want to do that. So we're skipping that and going straight to the homework for this, okay? So that is what we're doing in math. And here is a copy of it on the slide, what it would look like. If your parents could print it, they could print that and you work on it. If not, just copy these math problems. It's just 14 that you got to do. But please number them and show your work on each. Okay, now don't worry. If you have trouble getting any of the site on the sites or the links to work, don't worry if they don't work. We're just trying it out. This is just practice for us to see if it works. 
please let me know how it goes for you. I will work on scheduling meetings online to see and talk with you in small groups. Thanks and miss every one of you bunches. Have a good week. Bye-bye.